Hello wonderful people, how are you doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So you guys told me in my last video that you want to see more vlogs. So in today's vlog, we're going to visit Musambi village, right outside of Jigali. Let's get started. Africa! Africa! So guys, I'm in Musambi village, like 20 minutes outside of Chigali. We came here to see some birds. It's a bird sanctuary as they, as they call it here. Musambi means crane, it's like the crane bird. There are not always many activities to do here in Rwanda, so I'm happy with that this kind of activity exists. It's brand new, I think they opened like mid last year. Um, so we're just coming here to visit for the first time. I'm here together with Rizete, yeah. Amakuru, Umezute, Hey, okay. uh, and we are to Okechi, okay, Amakuru, Nimeza, hey, Go, Umezute. <laughs> All right, so we are here to see some exotic birds of Rwanda. Have we seen anyone yet? Yes, we have. Yeah, there's one there. Oh, look. oh, I see one over there. But first, let me take you back to Chigali to my apartment where this day began. I would like to emphasize that, that this video was recorded before the new lockdown measurements were announced where you have to carry a COVID test now to leave uh, Chigali. Also, all businesses such as restaurants, shops, markets and more are now mandated to close by 6 p.m. and all gatherings, social events, swimming pools and gyms are remaining closed. Things are tough my wonderful people. Hang in there wherever you are. Sorry, you were dirty. So, just woke up. It's uh, partly cloudy outside. It's looking good. Perfect time to go for a quick workout on this coffee day. Let's get started. Because the gyms are still closed, this coffee day is really one of the few moments many people get to work out. It's twice a month, every first and third Sunday. Certain parts of the roads are closed and they are only meant for uh, pedestrians and uh, cyclers, I would say. It's closed for up to three hours, from 7 to 10 a.m. Um, I rarely go there, to be honest, but I try to go there whenever I can, like today. All right, let's get this workout started. So when it comes to masks and face masks, you are allowed to work out without them. But you must have them right before and right after. So for me, I'm going to start running until I get home. So as long as I'm, in, I'm working out, I can do like this. It's like quite okay. I cannot imagine running with a face mask. So, from here, the road is blocked off. Only for people are going to work out or going by, by bicycle. And here, it's no more traffic. Me, I'm going that side. So, this road has kind of been divided in two. This part is for people, for cyclers, and then that part is for runners. And there are actually a lot of runners. the run took a shower had a quick breakfast and uh, all dressed up now ready to go to start the day
The ride here was pretty straightforward, only 20 minutes by car. We got a great reception. Uh, they have different prices here for uh, different people, so there's like a price for local Rwandans, price for uh, residents and international visitors. Luckily, I'm a Rwandan, so I get to pay this price. So I'm going to tell you about Umsambi village, what we do, what you're planning to do. Uh, Umsambi village is a sanctuary or a nature reserve for the great crowned queens that were rescued from captivity. Yeah. Is it noisy? No, it's okay. okay. Uh, it's a sanctuary or a nature reserve for the great crowned queens that were rescued from captivity. Mm -hmm. People used to have them in their homes and hotels. Oh, yeah, here so, in Rwanda? Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Yeah. So when they had them, some would cut the feathers to stop them from flying away. Mm. So some people were doing it so badly where you find that a crane can't even fly. So this started as a project in 2014 by a person called Dr. Olivia Sengmana, mm -hmm. where he started with a big social media campaign teaching people that it's illegal to have them in their homes or hotels because the cranes were getting over in the country. Due to when they plant them in homes, they don't lay eggs to multiply again or to have chicks and multiply. So we are doing such a project like to bring them again in the wild so that they can rebreed again. Mm. So here at Msambi village, we started in 2018. It's a wetland that was given to us by the government. Mm. It is 25 hectares and 21 is fenced with electrical fence. Uh, since we started like in 2015 to, 28, to 2020, like we do annual census to see if the trends are increasing or not de or decreasing. Mm. So we have rescued 310. Here we have over 70. Uh, in Akaja there are 166. Others are in quarantine facility. Mm. We have quarantine facility at Kanombe at the present is Paris. The purpose of it is that we do health checkup before we bring them to the wetland or we take them to the national park. For the other birds? Yeah, for the other birds. Like to be sure that if we bring them here, they are safe and they don't cause any other challenges here. So we first do quarantine and then we bring them here. The quarantine takes two months, like uh, at Kanombe. It's two months. Yeah, and then so if we bring them here, we put them in a release pen like to get familiar of the new uh, environment for the period of two weeks. Then after two weeks, we leave them to roam around. Yeah. Uh, as I said, we started here in 2018, but between 2018 and 2020, when we opened it for the visitors, in, during that period, we were doing restoration of the wetland because the uh, wetland was encroached by a local community. They had uh, activities which are not good for the wetland. So we had to first to do restoration, which includes like removing native tr non-native trees, mm. planting native ones, as well as removing the invasive ones. Though removing invasive ones, it's a challenge. We're still doing it. Like, because they are invasive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do okay. it like a monthly. Yeah. As also trying to put in the trail so that we can use it as we recommended to do. As I say that cranes, if they're in captivity, or if they're in homes, they don't lay eggs to rebreed again. But since we brought them here, we are having like success. Some have chicks that have grown and frying, mm -hmm. and others are having eggs because during this season, it's a breeding season. When mm -hmm. they breed like twice a year, like uh, according to the climate of Rwanda, they breed in rain season. So they do it twice a year. Mm. So, so far we have the eggs and others have chicks, others have chicks that have grown and that are flying. Uh, so if you're moving, you will see that there are cranes flying and those that are not flying. Those that are flying are the chicks that have grown and others that are just coming from other wetlands, coming in like to visit the fellows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and That's also true. those that are not flying, they are the ones that we rescued that we have here. Yeah, so among the cranes we have here, we have one which is like a habituated one called Mutesi. She's a female. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Who can tell me how to? Uh -huh. Can you tell if she's a female or a male? 
Uh, you have any idea? Maybe she's uh, bigger? Uh, it's hard to tell that, that uh, she's a female or a male because we do like a DNA test. Mm. Yeah, mm. but for us uh, here in Rwanda, we do blood sampling, then we send abroad, like in South Africa, they have oh, laboratories wow. to oh. do DNA tests for us. So you cannot just look and see, and that's you can't tell, even yeah, if we... you catch it and try to see genital parts, you can't. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So these are the trails that we use. Right now we are here. If you want to see many cranes, they are found in this area where mm. you can see 50 and above. Others are found in this area where you can see 10 and above. It's our new release area. Uh, so going to visit, you can use this trail called Snap Tree Walk and Lookout. Because mm -hmm. here it's a boardwalk. If you reach at the end, it needs you to go back. Mm. And maybe use this trail, which is the longest one, called Umsambi Trail. It is 750 meters. Mm. Reaching here is two way. You can either choose right or left. You find yourself here. Mm. Oh, coming down here, there is another smallest one called Acacia Trail. It is 50 meters. At the end, it has a chair. Mm. And there is another chair here. Uh, coming down here, it is picnic area. Of course, so far we don't have a restaurant, but we are building it. It's still under construction. So we allow people to bring snacks or soft drinks mm -hmm. and sit here and have their snacks. Uh, reaching at the picnic, you see another boardwalk that allows you to access these two trails. The west one has uniqueness because of water pond there and a chair. It's a cool place. We normally see there Kingfisher Bird. That's why we mm -hmm. named it Kingfisher Pond. Uh, we find there but, like the water birds, the Kingfisher, herons, the Egrets, cormorants, and other many, and and some flycatchers. Coming this side, the trail stops here, then needs you to go back, and then you either go the other way or you come up here. We have another, uh, we have an island here. We built uh, like a boardwalk coming from here, going there. Though it's still in this color, it's because you haven't yet. Uh, updated the map by the boardwalk. Is, is that there. what I have seen online where mm. they said they opened it? Yes. That's really cool. Yeah. Like <laughs> so this trail is the only trail that we are not using because of water and it's mud. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you thank so you much. Thank you. Thank you too. You can see this, but we are where we are standing. It's actually water We're standing over here, and this is already water. So we are here taking a break 
let me introduce you to my guest. This is Okechi. He is 27. I think. <laughs> Nigerian and single and smart. <laughs> and uh, he's the guy we hang around. He's good with cards. <laughs> smart guy. And then we have here our blondie, Rizette. <laughs> 27, mm. single, mm. half random. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also a member of uh, Chigali Fit. Yeah, so guys, what do you think of the um, of this new Musambi village? It's beautiful. Yeah? Yeah. It's, uh... it's simple, beautiful. My first time, like, I'm really amazed. It's lots of birds to see. Lots of birds to see. <laughs> Lots of birds to see, and yeah. uh, I've seen butterflies, which makes me happy. Yeah. So it's nice. It's a nice uh, little uh, break from the big city. Sure. Yes. Second back. Second back, totally. Definitely. <laughs> and, like it's just like it's a mean, like, an amazing view, and um, like like you said, like it's like a break away from the kind of like a bit of like the hustle and bustle of. Mm -hmm. The city. But these ladies are smarter than us because they brought pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Not so. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't have any cafeteria or restaurants here yet. They are building one uh, at the entrance. But for now, yeah, if we would have brought some uh, food or drinks, would have been better. But we will survive. It's 2021. As long as you don't have corona, you are fine. <laughs> this. Is the restaurant slash coffee shop that they are building by the time that you guys come to visit it should be done they're estimating it to be done in february 2021 now look at this place so guys we're finishing off this walk it's a lovely park still brand new birds everywhere i think you can hear them in the background and it's a nice break from the from the capital city. Like I keep telling you guys, you should not only stay in Chigali, go outside of Chigali. But um, yeah, so we just came here to kind of like spend a, a quick afternoon here so that we can uh, relax before we start the full year of uh, craziness. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you ever been here, let me know in the comment section below. Or if you're going, let me also know. Don't forget to subscribe. Support me on Patreon right here. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Peace.